Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? Welcome Albany Nursing Home. They've joined us this morning. They're online with us. Yeah, welcome, welcome. We'd like to, to welcome you and, um, and hope you enjoy the service this morning as we lead worship and song and a message and all that. Do look like them? Hold on. Pam, be nice. Anyways, I'm excited about being here this morning. You are going to hear something this morning, and you need to be ready for it. Because it will, I hope you, I hope you didn't wear socks today. It was, this will knock your socks off. It's this bit. What's happening with your church, in your church, through your church, for your church, this is going to happen. So you'll hear this more like towards the end of the, end of the message, and hope I haven't got you going, oh, I want to know right now. So just hang on. You'll get, we'll get there. So I hope you're excited about what God is going to do this morning. Um, we're going to wrap up our sermon series on focusing on, we're going to, tonight we're going to come up this morning, we're going to talk about focusing on God's big dream. And I want you to think about something, about coming back to church tonight. We are starting a seven-week series on soul shifting. Soul shifting. Now you're looking at me going, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, if you come tonight, you'll find out, because we'll be, we're going to introduce it tonight, and uh, it'll be fun. Our call to worship this morning, if you'd stand with us. And I hope that you're ready this morning. I hope that you're not just coming going, yes, yeah, it's a regular Sunday morning. No, this is different. You need to get excited about what God is doing. You need to get excited about worshiping and praising. Because I'm reading that of Psalms 147. It starts out by saying this, praise the Lord. It starts out by saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing praises to our God. How pleasant and, and fitting to praise Him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds their wounds. He determines the numbers of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limits. The Lord sustains the humble but casts out the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with a grateful with grateful praise. You hear that this morning? Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Right? Amen. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain. And makes the grass grow on the hill. He provides food for the cattle and for the young raven when they call. His pleasures is not in the strength of the horse, nor is delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him. Who puts, their, who puts their hope in His unfailing love. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love You, Jesus. We praise You. We worship You. We exalt You. For You are worthy of our praise this morning, Lord. The Scripture starts off by saying, Praise the Lord. That's what we're here to do this morning, Father, to praise You. So we lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. And this is Your name we pray. Amen. Sing along. And if this don't get you excited and moving you around, you better check your pulse. Make sure you're alive this morning. Let's go.
Are you awake yet? Yeah. Have you got your juices flowing? Yeah. You can be seated. Could you please do, do, do me a favor? Inform your face that you're happy this morning. Would you do that? Let it know. Hey, wait a minute. I'm happy. Oh, wait a minute. Smile. I'm glad to see it. Yeah, there we go. Some of you got that. Some of you got that this morning. Hey, I've got a few announcements for you this morning. February 13th is Super Bowl Sunday. We are going to go ahead and just not have service that night. Um, there's too much stuff going on. And some of you know about it, some of you don't. But we just need to, I, I need to exhale. So we're just going to cancel that service that night. February 20th, nursing home service at 2 o'clock. For those of you that would like to come out, but can't probably, still can they? They can? You got to have a mask, full body suit. Oxygen tank. <laughs> you in there like a like a spaceman? No. I guess I was kidding about that. So. So. <laughs> sorry. You're already over it. Okay, 4:30 is our board meeting. Um, take note of that. We've moved that to the the 20th. Um, just note that in your bulletin, um, just so that you know. Also, February 20th. Hold on. Hold on. Is also going to be right after church. This is going to be a busy day for Pastor Tom. Because right after church, and for Sheila. Hi, honey. You still love me? You're going to kill me later, aren't you? We're having our next Olive Branch meeting also on the 20th, right after church. Right after church. Which you'll figure out why in a little bit, why we're doing that. Okay? All right, what else we got going on? We've got community dinner, soups and sandwiches. That's the same day on the 20th? Yeah. What? You guys are young enough to handle all that. Come on. <laughs> young people up here complaining about stuff. They're only 70, 75, and 70 something. I don't know. We can do it. We can do it. So that's going to be our community dinner in the Fellowship Hall. Take note of that. Um, food bank dates are next, February 10th and the 24th, are the next food bank dates. I want to make a note here, okay? We met with Second Harvest Food Bank, and this has really, and it puts us an important thing for you guys to hear. I know a lot of times they talk about, you know, well, you have to be live in Dunkirk to come. You don't have to live in Dunkirk to come to this. You can come from Timbuktu if you can get here to the food bank if you want to. So take note of that also. Um, so if you need stuff, just come to the food pantry. It's from 3 30 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Be part of that. And February 14th, the community center is, is our drive through. And that is for Dunkirk. That's for Dunkirk. That's for, for Dunkirk. But if you come, we won't send you away, I promise. You come, we won't, we won't send you away. I promise. Because I'll be there and we'll make sure it happens. Ladies' Day, April 23rd, 9 to 3, Olivet Nazarene University. Sign up in the Welcome Center if you're interested in going to that. Um, I think Gloria put the flyer up and the poster up anyways. If you're interested, take note of that. I guess you have to be a lady to go to it because it's Ladies' Day. So that's an important announcement also. Um, I think that's all of our announcements. We have our offering this morning. Thank you for giving. And don't forget, guys, um, for you of you that are online, it's important to give back to God. It's an important thing that we do. It helps the church go on. It helps the church go forward. And it also, it also helps us it also helps us to do the things that we're going to be talking about later on today. As we give, give with a grateful heart. Give graciously. What? Oh, Spirit Rally. That's coming on too. On February 22nd, if you want to go see Pastor Glory to sign up. There's one more announcement I was supposed to make. Anybody remember what it was? This is not an announcement. The water's gone. The team wanted to raise $30. They raised $75. $75. It's pretty good. That's awesome. But somebody hit me up with another announcement before I came up here. What was that? Yeah, Greg. The 100th anniversary. Oh, the 100th anniversary thing. No, We're celebrating our 100th anniversary as a church. I know. Y'all don't look 100. <laughs> Y'all don't look a day over 99, I promise. I'm just kidding. But hey, we're looking for three people that are not on the board 
to help with this. So, um, see, see Greg Dotson or Tina Elliott. See them if you're interested and be part of that. Just check with them, okay? Now we'll take up our offering. If you want to give, you can stand with us this morning. The offering box is here. You want to come up and just drop your offering in there. You can go online, dunkirknazarene.org, give there. There's so many different ways. You can mail it in, whatever you guys want to do. But the offering box is right here. If you want to give this morning, just walk up, drop it in, go back to your seat as the worship team leads us in the next song.
we would encourage you to use it. It's a great place to go to connect with God. But this morning, um, be praying specifically for God's big dream in your life. What God would be doing, calling you, challenging you, and pushing you to do and to be. Um, but the altar is open. If you have things going on in your life, you just need to need prayer. You come this morning. As the worship leads us to this next song, Oh, come to the altar. You come this morning. God will meet you here. Okay?
we thank you, Jesus, for knowing full, we know full well, Lord, that you are always here, working and guiding and directing and leading us. Father, we put our faith and trust completely in you this morning. Lord, I pray, Father God, for those that are hurting, those that aren't here this morning. I look around and I can see some of my friends that just aren't here. And Father, I miss them. I miss them. So, Father, I pray for them this morning. I pray that your heart, that your spirit, Father, would go to wherever they're at, Lord Jesus, and to speak to them this morning. And, Father, as we share what we're going to share this morning, Father God, I pray that you would be with each one of us, Father God, as we talk and share. And, and uh, maybe some will even have questions. I don't know. But, Father, we are stepping out in faith. We're stepping out in faith. Being, being Jesus to the world. And that's what you've called us to be, is Jesus to the world. So this morning, Father God, we just surrender all, all to thee, Father, my blessed Savior. So Father, I just pray this morning, Father God, that each one of us, Father God, will have an open ear to hear, and hearts that are open and warmed up, Father God, right now, as we, as we bring the message to, 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 to your people. Be with Kim at the altar, Father God, this morning. Um, you know what she's going through and dealing with. Father, we just place her into your hands. I pray for my friend Tony Bauer as we as he lost his wife last week. Father, I pray for him and Jerry. Father, I pray for my brother Jerry. And Father, your spirit, Father God, would just rest on them. Father, faithful people will always find a faithful God. So Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just continue to be faithful to each one of us as we move forward in Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> we dismissing kids? God won't get you, little rascals. Kids are dismissed for Children's Church. Kids are dismissed for Children's Church. Can I go? Probably not. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. How faithful is God? Have you found God faithful in your life? Have you found it? Have you found in your life, like I have, that it's hard to do anything without Him moving first, without Him becoming active in your life? Have you found that? I hope you have. Where, where, the, where the moving of God's Spirit is so challenging to you that it just draws you closer and closer to Him every step of the way. Let me ask you something. Does anybody have a testimony this morning to that? To God's faithfulness in your life? Anybody have a testimony to God's faithfulness in your life? Okay, but not yet. Anybody? With a testimony? Amen. Thanks. We're not going to take a lot of time to do this. We got some things to share. So, anybody else have a testimony? 
this morning of God's great faithfulness to you. Isn't He faithful and through all generations? Yeah. Haven't you seen Him move in your life in such a way that, that just draws you closer to Him? I know I have. I'm going to skip some of this after, and so, boom, we're going to just go right through all this stuff right here. Because it's not that important. So let me ask you a question this morning. What seizes your imagination? What seizes your imagination? Back in the day when my kids were little, um, they used to have the imagination station. Remember that from, uh, what was it, Focus on the Family, but about the Imagination Station. And my kids, my kids loved to listen to the Imagination Station because they would go on journeys and trips and all these different things on the, with the Imagination Station. And they, they would end up in different places and different things were, were going on and, and all that was happening. And, and they just loved to go to the Imagination Station, to listen to those. And we, we had, hey guys, they were called audio cassettes. Cassette tapes. They were about that big, and they weren't. It, don't know what that is. But anyways, teens are in the back going, cassette tape. What is he talking about? When you go to the museum, you'll see some rotten kids. Anyways, so what seizes your imagination? What grips you so tight in your heart that you just can't even stand it? That you have to move on to this. You have to do something. You have to go. You have to step out. You have to get real with, you, with God. Acts 16, 9 through 10. I hope you got your Bibles opened up or your Bible apps opened up on your phones, whatever you use. This is important. Acts chapter 16, 9 through 10. I don't care if you pop open your phone. You can do that. That's okay with me. If you open up the Word of God, and it's, it's a book form, that's cool too. But it says this. That night, Paul had a vision. Ooh. That night, Paul had a vision. He saw a man from Macedonia in northern Greece pleading with him, come over here and help us. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this this morning. I call them Jesus bumps, actually. Jesus bumps. Come over here and help us. So we decided to leave Macedonia at once. For we could only conclude... Man, this is good. Where's Kat? Where's Kat? She needs to be in here to hear this. We could only conclude that God was calling us to preach the good news there. At first, you might not recognize it. But this is a pivotal moment, not only in the church history, but also in the history of the world. The vision from God was the primary catalyst for, for the timely transporting of the good news about Jesus from one continent to the next. The vision helped Paul and his missionary friends focus God's direction for their lives. We all need dreams with that kind of hard focus, don't we? Let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about being a missionary? Have you ever looked, at, looked in the mirror and you, you say, you know what? You're a missionary. You're, you're, you're a missionary. We got missionaries here in our church. You know who they are? Josh and Peggy Howell. They're missionaries. Yep. They serve on the Gideons, with the Gideons. Well, they're not over in Timbuktu. No, they're not, they're not in China. They're not in Africa. They're, no, they're here in Dunkirk, Indiana. Did you know you could be a missionary right here? Yeah. Did you know that you could sit on committees, and you could sit on boards, you could do different things, you can get active in your community, you can do different things, and you are a missionary? Yeah. Kat, you missed my whole thing. Anyways. I think I already know. No, you really don't know this part. Anyways. The vision helped Paul and, again, his missionary friends focus God's direction for their lives. We all need that kind of focus. You know, back when I was younger, hard for you guys to believe, I'm sure, I was a little out of focus. I was a little hyperactive. I was a little crazy. I was here, there, and everywhere. And, you know, I, was, I, I did all kinds of different things. But it got to a point in my life where it's like, God said, would you just focus? Would you just get it together, pal? Put it together. Let's go. So here we go. 
The Macedonian, the Macedonian vision gives five outlooks to help us adjust the focus of our vision. And the first one is this. Be open to new possibilities. Be open to new possibilities. Change is scary sometimes, isn't it? Stepping out and doing something for God is scary sometimes. And sometimes God says, do it anyways. Go. Be active. Participate. Be part of what's going on. So the first thing is we need to be open to new possibilities. God will only shut the doors that He wants to shut. And He will throw wide open the doors He wants to throw wide open. And if we don't walk through those doors that He throws wide open, we're missing the mark. We're missing it. We're missing it. The second thing is this. Be objective about others, about others who see a different vision. Be, be objective. When Paul and his first missionary partner Barnabas started planning their second missionary journey just after the Jerusalem Council, a problem cropped up. Barnabas wanted to give a guy named, by the name of Mark a second chance of being a member of the team. And they had a little bit of a disagreement, okay, about bringing Mark back. Because Mark had some things go on, you know, in their first missionary journey. It says here in Acts 15, it says, Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark deserted them. The disagreement over, there, over this was so sharp, they separated. Barnabas took John Mark and, and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas, and the and believers sent them off, entrusting them to the Lord's grace. Who was right in the, agree, in the disagreement? Was Paul right for denying him an opportunity? Or was Barnabas right for giving him a second chance? You see, we had this, this, this great vision... We had this great vision for Olive Branch Nazarene Church. We're going to start a new church. We're going to satellite in. We're going to do all this. We had this great idea. This great idea. But all along, God was working something else out. God was doing something different. He was moving us in a completely different direction. And I was so focused on being the church, starting the church. Oh, this is transparency. I missed it. I'm glad someone else didn't. Because I missed it. I thought it was the church. We've got to have a church out there. Blah, blah, blah. Be objective when others have visions. Right? The third thing is this. Be observant. For others to share your dream, you've got to be observant. After Paul and Barnabas realized their specific dreams were not compatible, Paul, Paul found a young man by the name of Timothy who shared his focused dream. In Acts 16, it said, Paul and Silas went from, from, from Darby and then to Lystra. And they met Timothy, a young disciple whose mother was a Jewish believer, but, but whose father was so Greek. But, well, I'm sorry, whose father was a Greek. 2 Timothy was, was well thought out by believers in Lystra and Iconium. So Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. And perhaps no one understood their religious and cultural gaps between the Jews and the Greeks, like Timothy did, a young man who grew up in both worlds. What a great addition to the dream team of Paul and Silas. Men interested in taking the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. You see, the gospel is for everybody, isn't it? Right. Yeah. The gospel isn't just focused on the Jews or the Gentiles. He came to the world so that the whole world might be saved. Amen? The whole world might be saved. Not just the Jews. Not just the Greeks. Not just, you know, for everybody. The gospel is for everybody. A gem dealer was strolling the aisles of, of the Tucson, of the Tus 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 Tuscan Gem and Mineral Show. He noticed a blue violet stone the size and shape of a potato. He looked it over and then, as calmly as possible, asked the vendor, You have $15 for this? 
The seller realized the rock wasn't as pretty as the other in the bin, and he lowered the price to $10. The stone had since been certified as 1,905 carats of natural star sapphire, about 800 carats larger than the previous largest stone of its ever. And this rock was appraised at $2.28 million. It pays to be observant, doesn't it? Also, I take out of that story, when God sees you, there's value there. You might look in the mirror and go, I'm worthless. I've got nothing. I got nothing to give. I got nothing to share. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And God says, you're worth at least a million, billion dollars to me. Because that's how valuable you are to me. This is true. It says this is true. When your dream comes into focus, some won't, sh won't, 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 won't share it. Not, everybody's, not, not everybody we talk to today, trust me, not everybody we talk to today, not everything, everybody that we share this with today is going to go, yes, yes, that's exactly what we need. Some of you are going to go, have you lost your mind? Some of you are going to go, no, we can't do that. And I'm just going to tell you, breathe. Just breathe a minute. The next thing is this. Be obedient to God's no's as well as his yeses. Be obedient to the no's as well as to his yeses. But more than anything else, we've got to be obedient to the yeses, don't we? When God says go, we need to go. When he says move, we need to move. When he says stand, we need to stand. When he says sit, we need to sit. We need to be obedient to God in every aspect of our lives. And when we do that, God can take us and use us for the growing of his kingdom. But until we start saying yes, he can't use us. He can't use us. And the fifth, fifth thing is, is be optimistic about the future. Be optimistic. Look, look further beyond what you can see. Look further beyond what you can even dream or imagine. I wish Kenny was here this morning because I'd have had him share a little bit. Because he shared at the board meeting. We talked about this at the board meeting. And I'll tell you what. I, I was blown away by what Kenny was sharing. Because he, he took our little dream <laughs> and he expanded into, this, into something huge and amazing. So I know you're watching, Kenny, um, but this is big. Be optimistic. First time you hear this, oh, you know, I'm not stupid. I don't to do that. We're not doing that in the church, blah, 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 blah. Don't be like that. Be optimistic because God is going to do great things through Duncan <laughs> Nazarene Church. Okay, I'll say it again. He's going to do great things to Dunkirk Nazarene Church. Amen. But we have got to get out of his way and let him do it. We've got to get out of his way. In the book, the book Carpe Mammon, Leonard's, Leonard Sweet gives some of his favorite definitions of optimistic. Of an optimist. An optimist is a 75-year-old man newly married and looking for a house near an elementary school. That was funny. You didn't laugh. An optimist are parents who have three, teenager, three teenage children in one car. An optimist is one who takes, five pounds, takes four pounds of steak, five pounds of charcoal, and one match to a picnic. And my personal favorite is an optimist is one who has been captured by the love of God. Without vision, life can result in pessimism. But since Christianity is a vision faith, no one has more reason to be optimistic than the Christian, the Christ follower. No one has more reason to be optimistic than us. Because don't we long for something more than here? Are we looking forward to something more than what we have here? Isn't there a, a mountain of beyond a valley? Up over the hillside anyways? Isn't there mansions built for us in heaven? 
Aren't you looking forward to things more than just what's, what we have right now? So, the same hour. Uh, this is, this is, um, here, I want to read this to you out of Acts chapter 16, 25 to 29. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors flew wide open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailers woke up to see the prison doors wide open, and he assumed all the prisoners had escaped. So he drew a sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted at him, Don't, do not do it. We're all here. <coughs> Trembling with fear, the jailer called, up, called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved along with your entire household. That same hour, the jailer took the missionaries home, cleaned and dressed the wounds from their beatings, fed them, and he and his entire family were baptized. This was a result from a focused dream. Result from a focused dream. <clears throat> Our challenges this morning are this. Cat, would you come up? And I'm going to ask for one more thing. I'm going to ask for the board members to come up too. If you're on the board, come up. Yeah, you're on the board. Come up here. Yeah, up here. Yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know if you meant here or up. No, up here. I want you up here. <coughs> Never lose optimism of knowing that God is constantly at work to help us accomplish his will. If he's closing doors now, it's only because he's working to open up open ones later. Do you have focused vision? Are you open, objective, observant, obedient, and optimistic? If you're one of these areas and you need attention in your life, go to God today. If, if any of these things need, need your attention, you need to go to God today and ask Him, Lord, help me. Help me see. And if you come tonight, it's kind of got to carry on from this, from, from there. Anticipating doing great things. You can anticipate doing great things. And the reason I asked the board to come up is, is because this is something that the board has already voted on. And the, the board has voted unanimously yes. But we felt like it's going to be bigger than just this. What we're talking about doing will take every single body, person, soul, might, and strength in this, in this room to accomplish God's big vision. You scared yet? Are you shaking in your boots? I want to challenge you guys to listen to what Kat's going to share and be open to the moving of His Spirit in your life. And I want you to start thinking, even dreaming today, right now, where God wants to use you. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is, God's working. And He's working in Dunkirk, Indiana. And I'm excited, and I'm hungry for it, and I can't wait to get moving but in order to do so like pastor tom said this is not just a vision that god has given me that i can do alone this is going to take the entire embodiment and it's big so as he stated earlier we were using originally the olive branch church we wanted to convert back into a church revamp it get it back going um god put it on my heart that that wasn't the direction that needed to be done the direction took a hard left as to what we needed to use this property for, and that being the New Hope Nazarene Ministry Center. Empowering and inspiring women of domestic violence. So we want to turn this property that has been given to our church into a shelter, transitional living center of media, to monitor and 
to mentor to women and children and give them a new hope and a new life. That in so, some place so small as Dunkirk, that we can make an impact in a place that desperately needs it. Not just Dunkirk, Indiana, but the surrounding royal areas that don't have the resources, don't have the love or the support that we are able to bring and provide through God. Our services would include not only the first stages of being able to place people from domestic violence, but also to help encourage and help their lives thrive. Going from a toxic relationship or environment that circumstances has prevented them in order to succeed. With the help of all of you, I want to be able to give them a new hope. I want to be able to give them the resources and the structure in order to rebuild their life and do it through God. So initially, we want to get up, get everything off the ground and provide emergency services. There are several circumstances where shelters are full. There's, there aren't services around these areas that cater to situations of this caliber. And we have the opportunity right now to be able to help. So in order to get someone the help they need in an emergency situation until we can get them placed somewhere, and once we get our transitional living units up, that's when things are gonna take a bigger turn. Not only, like I said, providing the services of being able to re rebuild lives, um, but giving them the love and support from our Christian men and women. Showing them God's way of life. Showing them that no matter where you are in your life or what has come amongst you, you are able to crawl from the depths and God's people are here to help you do so. This is something bigger than me. This is something bigger than all of us. This is something that can truly change an unchanging environment. We've stressed many, many times about community outreach over the past couple of years of really wanting to reach our community on a deeper level. And I feel God placed this on my heart in order to do so. I don't want to just stop at the facility that we have. My long-term goal is to eventually buy homes throughout several counties that don't have resources and continue to spread transitional living resources. This is something that is completely out of the box. Something that is needed, but not done. So I'm hoping that you can get excited about this change, that you can get hungry for God's work in our community and we constantly are talking about missions. We must do these missions. You know, the missions that are around the world are so amazing. But God has placed a mission here in our backyard. And I pray that you will open your mind and you will open your heart and realize that we can make a change, that we can be better and we can get out of our comfort zones because God needs us to, do, to make changes. This world needs change more than it needs anything right now. And God is the change that this world needs. So I'm hoping that we can spread, like Pastor Tom said, we can walk as Jesus. And we can provide a hope and a love for people who may never know it. So that is the big plan. No longer Olive Branch Church. Moving forward as New Hope Nazarene Ministry Center. All right. We've talked to our Olive Branch Committee, which is no longer that anymore. We've talked to the church board. We've met with Pastor Tim Kellerman, our district superintendent. I've met with our assistant super district superintendent, Jill Waltz. I've talked to many pastors around our district, and they all say, this is so needed. I talked to the police department, the police chief uptown here. He supports this idea too. Kenny Lopez um, is very supportive of this. So all these, everybody I've talked to have said, yes, absolutely. 
this is necessary. Do you realize how many women in our world are battered? Not just physically, but mentally. But mentally also. I've counseled women who said, I would just assume they punch me in the face and talk bad about me and talk bad to me like they do. Because at least those scars go away. Those pains go away. But the verbal abuse is constantly in their mind. And here's where you come into play. Kat and I met. I've had a lot of meetings with Kat lately. Anyways, and the, the whole idea is mentoring. The whole concept is mentoring. You're sitting there going, hey, they're going to want our money. No, we don't want your money. Now, if you don't want to give it, we'll take it. But we're not asking for your money. We're asking for you. We're asking for men and women who would dare to be different for Jesus, who will dare to step out and say, you know what? I'll go and teach those ladies how to cook. I'll go and sit and just talk with them. I'll go and teach them how to take care of their children. I'll go. I'll go. When there's a need that's there, I'll go. When we need somebody to sit in the nursery to watch over children, I'll go. I'll go. We're looking for people who would stand up and say, I will dare to be different. I will dare to be different. I will dare to stand up. And I will dare to say yes to Jesus because you know what? That's what it's all about. It's about daring to be different. And you know what? This is, this is, I'll tell you what, when she mentioned it to me a couple Saturdays ago, I was like, what? 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 Thinking outside of the box, completely outside of the box. But then I heard about the Muncie shelter full, the Marion shelter full, all these different shelters that are out there for these battered women are always full. Which, number one, that should break your heart to think that if there are women out there that are being treated like that. Right? And two, it should say we can make a difference in their lives. We can make a difference in their lives. It may take you to go out and help clean up the house out there. Go back to the church and let's, let's, let's finish up. And then now, now, now not just straightening up the church and inventorying the church, but getting rid of stuff. Pastor Gloria is already on it. We're going to sell stuff out there. We're getting rid of stuff. Because all those rooms are going to be used, are going to be functional rooms to make a difference in these women's lives. So, as the church, the committees voted yes. The boards voted yes. Pastor Tim said yes. And we weren't going to do this without bringing it to you. We weren't. Because we felt like, yeah, we got a great, we have an amazing team right here, amen? An amazing team. But nothing happens without you. So here's where you come in. Here's where you come in. And I know that there's peer pressure in this room. I know that there's all that. But we're, we're, we are looking for people who would just say yes. When you have a need out there, I'll go. When we start building these, when we start building these, these, these rooms, and, and you know, we're looking for guys like Tim Tribble who can contract, and Gail Reed, and, and the board, these guys up on the board, who can actually hammer and nail Jerry and, and Gary. All you guys... Even if, even if you can go get me a Mountain Dew or something, you know? Yeah, you, Greg. I got to keep looking over here because you're over here. Kenny and, and, and Colt and all. Uh, Chad, it takes us all. But are you daring to be different? Are you willing to go against the flow of what the world would say would be stupid and wrong? Because I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of things about this that make no sense to me. But there's a million other things that, that make complete sense to me. We have women that need help. We need women out there that need love. We have women that are battered and beaten and broken who need Jesus.
I want to present to you Isaiah chapter 6. Seraphims and all the little, little creatures are flying around and, and the coal is being put on Isaiah's lips and all this is happening. God just asked the question, who can I send and who will go? Who can I send and who will go? Obviously, you're going to anyways. I had them hooked. Just women. These are women and children. We need to break patterns. So many times you see patterns that just flow through generation after generation after generation. It's time to stop that pattern and show these children that there is a better life. There is a better life through God that they can see that look, these people came and helped my mother and us through something that they don't know us from Adam. But they're there and they are going to help us. They are going to to step with, through life with us. And this isn't just a, oh, come stay and we'll, you know, we'll give you some food and give you some blankets and then you can be on your way. This is a commitment. This is a commitment to these women's lives, these children's lives, saying, we're gonna walk through this with you. We're gonna walk with you as God has walked through every storm we've been through. And we're gonna go through from beginning to end. And once we have gotten you to a place where you're free, of this pain and you're able to stand on your feet, well guess what? Then we're going to stay in your lives and walk with you some more just to make sure that you're doing all right. That's the old time goal. We're going to break patterns because our communities need these patterns broken. There is too much abuse, there is too much addiction, there is too much corruption that is happening in these small communities that don't get this attention, they don't have the resources. We can break these chains that are binding generation after generation after generation of the same thing. And all we have to do is add a little bit of Jesus. She told me she was done, but she wasn't. Sorry. But also, um, you know, we talked earlier about, about value, about how people see themselves. When they look at themselves, and these women that are, go through all this stuff and, and deal with all these, these, uh, this abuse and the batters and the, all the bad, bad, batterings and things like that, they look at themselves and they don't see any value in their lives. We have an opportunity to provide value, to bring value back into their lives, to make a difference. To make a difference. Every time I think about it, you know, I think about, about these, these young ladies and these children. And that's what we brought about the men. Men, we could use you to go out there and teach them how to build a birdhouse or... Or, 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 or how to change a tire, how, how, to, how to do different things that, 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 that little boys and the men need to, you know, young men need to know that their daddies aren't around to teach them. You know? So church, 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 are you willing, are you willing to just be different? I'm ready. I know that this... I'm ready. <laughs> Just yet. Not yet. What he was basically saying is, you know, if we start getting into um, programming, saying, okay, well, these ladies are going to go out there and teach you guys how to use your wig vouchers in order to get a meal, and I'm going to show you how to cook a meal on what you have. I'm going to show you how to, you know, we're going to go out and do crafts with, you know, the children. There's so many things that we're going to be asking as far as the mentorship, not working for the, the organization per se. Just who would like to go out and see some, some kids and some ladies who just need a little love today? Who wants to go and pray with them? Let's have our prayer warriors go out and mentor to them. Who wants to sit down and do a, a you know, children's service and have a children's you know, 
ministry class that day. Those types of things where we can ask our church to lean in and mentor to these women and children and just show them compassion and love. That's what we're asking of all of you. Teach them how to sew. Teach them how to do crafts with their kids. You know, this, this, that kind of stuff. To just lead a Bible study. To spend 10 minutes just teaching them about Jesus. So, I've thought long and hard about how to do this. And the only way I know is just to be, to, just to be bold and be real. So, I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. Lord, you stay. And we're going to sing another song. And as they sing, I want you to think about this, and I want you to be real about this. And I'm going to have Cat. I'm going to have Cat go. You're going to go down in the front here, Cat. Okay. Go to the front. <laughs> and if you were, if, if, if you, if you, if you would just dare to be, if you would just dare to be different, if you would dare to say yes. I just want you to come up here and just put your hands on Kat. We're going to lay hands on Kat we're going to pray for her. Um, you want to stand with us if you would? If, you, if, you're, if you're willing to be different, if you're willing to just say, you know what, I'll go out and, and teach them how to make a blanket, Carol. Or, or so, all of you ladies, so. If you would dare to just be different. We all, we're all, we, we, we all look for missions, don't we? Look for something to do to make a difference in our world as Christians. That's what we're called to be, right? Difference makers. What greater difference can you make than to change someone's life for Christ? To change it for the much, much better. So as the worship team leads us in this song, you come up. Yeah, you're bored. If you want to go down and lay hands on her too, go ahead. You don't have to stay up here. You can go.
all stepped out. So, worship team, if you want to come down too and be part of this, come on down. Because I know that our worship team is extremely supportive of what, what this movement is. Because they've known about it for a while. Because <laughs> Kat, she threw up on us two weeks ago. So, and I mean, she threw up on us two weeks ago. Hey, Jerry, I want you to come stand beside your daughter. What? It's okay. I'm not going to mention anything about it anyways. I'm going to pray for Cat, but just put a hand on Cat and just go down the row here. I'm not just going to pray for Cat. I'm going to pray for New Hope Nazarene Ministry Center. Amen. As God moves us and steps us out and causes us and challenges us to be different. Father God, we thank you for this day, this service. Father, what a blessing this is. Father, I look down, Father, the rows here, this, this row, and all the saints and angels, Father, have stepped out and said yes. So, Lord, I pray today, Father, for, for new hope. Father, that, that it would bring new hope to many, 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 many women that are broken. Families, Father God, that just need to hear you. Families, Lord Jesus, that just need to touch that just need somebody to come out and love them. Father, I pray this morning, Father God, for this, uh, this, new, this new adventure, Father, that we're, we're stepping out into. Father, I'm taking by everybody standing up here that this is a yes from the church. And Father, we are moving forward. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would just bless Kat as she, as she leads us in this. Father, she will be the director, CEO, president, grant writer, whatever she needs to be, Father God, she's going to be all those things for this place. She, not, she may not physically do them, Lord, but she will be leading us as we do them for her. So, Father, help her, Jesus, to just be, uh, to give her strength, give her wisdom, give her hope, Father God, that when things, when things like they're not going, or going great, Father God, build her up. Help us to be the church, Lord. Not just be a church, but be the church. We need to be Jesus' hands and feet to the world. Thank you again for this great morning, this great service, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You're dismissed. It's exciting. <laughs>